Hey, everybody. Who's actually on? Yeah, Brian, you're going to be doing all the answering questions. Uh, anybody's got one directly for me, and if I miss it, Brian, just shoot me a text, I guess, and I'll see it pop up on my phone. So we'll wait a few more minutes to see if we get some more people on. I guess I can talk a little bit about this fly. So what we're going to be tying is a half and half. It's not a clouser with a tail. Um, it's not a deceiver. It's both. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be tying it the way that I was taught how to tie it. Um, I know there's about 30 or 40 different variations. I'll tie it the way that I was taught, and uh, it's the way that, in my opinion, looks best. And I know catches fish, so that's all that matters to me. But yeah, we'll just wait a few more minutes, get a few more people on. See, we got a few on. I don't even know what time it is. I know I got on early. Okay, we're at 630. So I guess I probably should introduce myself. Um, I guess I could say I'm back for all the uh, for all the Healing Water Charlottesville guys. Uh, been a while since I've been on, been a while since a lot of you guys have seen me, but doing my part, I've been in the background helping you guys out wherever I can. So yeah, uh, Brian threw this offer out to me and I took it and yeah, be tying tonight for you guys, tying the half half. Okay. Stu and John are on. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, time to have some fun with this fly. Let's get it knocked down a little bit better. I had this all set up better earlier. All right, so that's the half and half, super basic, couple materials, awesome fly. One thing I will point out, it's not a little fly. Uh, I had the request from uh, some people to tie something that was a bait fish pattern. Got no problem tying a bait fish pattern. This one's gonna be about four or five inches long. Um, I tie them up to a foot long. Those are gonna be the ones that I use for saltwater and striped bass. This is gonna be tying them up, um, doing something smaller um, tonight. Smallmouth and resident stripers in the James because the uh, James has got shad in it right now and I'm getting out there whenever I can to try to catch me some shad. And while I'm out there, if I can catch a striper or two, I'm not gonna complain. So first thing I'll talk about, hook, 2X long uh, or a 3X long. I traditionally tied these on the old Mustad 3711 which is not really found easily these days, but any standard heavy duty saltwater hook will work. Uh, you just need a two X long, you need that little bit longer shank. So start out, throw down a thread base, and we're gonna cover the entire hook with our thread base. We just wanna make sure that we've got good coverage it allows us to be able to get when we put materials down for them to actually stick. If you've got bare hook shank, the material's going to slip off. It looks like my vise is not quite tight enough. So then we're going to go back two eye lengths, a third of the way back, something like that. Um, this is one of those flies. It's like a clouser in that sense. So we've, for those of us who have tied the clouser, 
we know that that, you know, where we put the hook or where we put the dumbbell eyes, not quite all the way forward, not halfway back, somewhere in the middle. Um, I usually do it so that I'm about a third of the way from the hook point to the eye. So basically I'm somewhere, or actually, well, the eye to the hook point. So I'm about a third of the way back. So tying in dumbbells, doing our figure eights, three wraps one way, three wraps another, center them up, tighten up the vise, because apparently I don't have a tight vise tonight. Do a bunch of figure eights. And right now, as you can tell, it was moving. My eyes are moving back and forth. Got to get those tight. So what do we do? We helicopter around. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking the thread and I'm going between the hook, between the hook shank and the uh, dumbbell. And I'm tightening up all those wraps I put in. And my hook is still moving. Yeah, gonna have to deal with that tonight. But if you look, it doesn't move nearly as much. Um, I could put some Zappa Gap super glue, something like that on there. I'm not going to. Um, it's not that big of a deal to me. Uh, I tie these flies to be quick. My thing, as uh, anyone who remembers my tying, generally is guide flies. I like flies that are super quick. So what I'm pulling out is good old extra long saddles. What I'm looking for in here are a couple that are kind of matched. Um, oops, dropped a couple. So gonna grab two that look pretty similar. There's one, there's two, and that's what we want. We want two hackles that look pretty similar. Now, do they have to be exactly the same? No, we're not going for that kind of perfection. We're not tying for trout, we're tying for bass. So what I've got is two saddles, as you can tell, two. Um, generally, I try to fan them. I try to set them up so they fan out. Some people like them fanned in. Honestly, I don't think it really makes much of a difference. But, so what I'm going to do is I'm trying to put it, trying to make, you know, basically what it is is you think that these are going to be the length of your fly. So I'm putting them, you know, what is that? I got an eight inch hand, so four or five inches. Put a couple of wraps down. Wrap back. Cut off the excess. Get them in good and tight. Now I didn't talk about my thread. Tonight I'm using Danville flat waxed 210 denier. Uh, one of the things since last time I was with you guys, I switched over to Danville Flat Waxed. I don't have to worry about who I tie for anymore, so went back to the stuff I really like. I think you guys have got some in your tying kits. So, but yeah, basically, now you look at it, all it is is some feathers hanging off the back. Nothing crazy. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna proceed forward to just behind the eye. And here's where having a rotary vise is awesome. Uh, yeah, according to Brian, yeah, sorry, I missed your question, Brian. Yeah, definitely use the good stuff. Use the better stuff you can. Um, I'll show you. They've got a couple in here that these are going to get called out, and I will not end up using this feather. I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. This feather will not get used for tying this sort of a thing. I'll use these for doing mayfly tails or something like that, doing something else. Just... If you look, it's all kinked and ugly. Um, just not a good feather to use. Always want to use the best feathers you can get. That's something that we always try to do. So the next thing I'm going to do, since I'm going to tie a chartreuse in white, because there's an old adage that says, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. Um, when it comes to stripers, I uh, still hold to that one, because I will say it's pretty true. So this is just plain old bucktail. Um, this is one of my ones. Came out of my kit, and what I'm going to grab is, I can grab my bucktail scissors, about a clump, maybe quarter pencil. We're not looking for a big clump. Um, this thing, when you crush it all down, it's about the size of like a big pencil lead. 
So not looking for a ton, because and you'll see why in a minute. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to lay this down, get it around the hook eye, just get an idea how long we want it. I'm going to actually shorten this up. It's a little bit long. Make sure you grab the right scissors. If you've only got one pair, that's fine. I have way too many. So I want to shorten them up. Actually, I think that's still a little long. Part of the game. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this to not quite be the full length of the saddle hackle. Just a bit shorter. So that would be the first hackle or the first bucktail getting put down. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna flip our vise back over and grab our white. Now, one thing about this fly, remember it swims upside down. So you want your darker color on top, just like a normal bait fish, uh, just like a clouser. I know we've all tied a clouser upside down. Yep, Brian's right. You know, definitely uh, experiment with your color patterns. I, uh, I tie these in a variety of colors, but since I'm going to be fishing it, where I'm going to be fishing it, I'm going to use chartreuse and white. Now, there's a white bucktail. It's got some really long fibers on it. Um, almost uh, regretting using that, using something that I'm going to use, cut so much out of these. We're going to shorten up, get rid of a few of those really long ones. If you look at how much I'm planning on trimming off of this one. That's a big bucktail. So I'm not putting a ton on right now. I'm kind of trying to do a little bit of a base layer. And this one's going to be the much bigger shot. It's literally just going to be tied right on top. If you saw that last one, it's just a tiny little shot. And really what that's there for is to help keep those hackles positioned when going through the water. Now I'm going to tie on a much bigger piece of bucktail. This is more along the lines of your normal clouser amount. So this is half a pencil. So again, I'm figuring out how much I want. Cutting off, you know, on this one, a couple inches. Really want these hack. I really want this bucktail to be a little bit shorter than the uh, hackle fibers. You're gonna have a few that go long. It's fine. Pull out those couple of really long ones. This buck needed to go in for a haircut. It needed a little trim job. So again. Putting down a good amount. Now, if you look, quite a bit of bucktail coming off the back of that. One more thing in this general area. I've got some pink flashaboo. Now, this happens to be like an extra large saltwater one. Doesn't really matter what you use. When I put my hand in my box uh, today, pulled out the I pulled out that one and said, well, that'll work. So what I'm doing figuring out about how long I need. So I need something about like that or so. So it kind of creates almost like a little lateral line. Fold it over. Trim off your extra. Save that. That's good stuff. So I don't know if I ever taught you guys this trick. Or if Brian ever taught you guys this trick. This is one from, uh, I can actually remember the exact moment I learned it. Captain Ty Mattioli taught this to me in the Orbit Store in Short Pump. So tie it in. If you notice, I've got it tied kind of more or less right down the shank of the hook. All I'm going to do is turn it sideways. Hold it on the side so my fingers are just holding it. 
Put a couple wraps down. And now it's going to sit down the sides of the fly. And it's really just kind of creating a lateral line, a little bit of flash, something to catch the eye of the fish. So next thing we do, flip that fly back over, tie up to the head. Now here's where the predominance of our uh, chartreuse is going to go in. If you're tying in pink, you know, if you're tying this as purple and gold, um, you know, if you want to tie a jam, you want. Um, or you could tie it up, uh, you know, do orange and blue for UVA. Might catch a fish. I don't know. I've never tried the orange and blue color combo. So I just kind of pulled out some of the extras. What I got here is probably about the same amount as that second, second batch of uh, hair I put in. So half a pencil's worth. Gonna shorten it up, kind of put it on here, figure out how long I want it. You look mm, two inches long or so. Kind of trying to get it just past the, by the bend of the hook. And when I do this, try not to cover everything up. Let's tie this in. And one thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tie it in. So I got room for the head. And I've got the ability to put it right at the back, right at where that dumbbell is. If you look, I've got a little bit of a head here. You put your dumbbell too far forward, you got uh, you don't have room for your to tie off the fly. You put it too far back, you got too big of a spot. So this gives us plenty of room. What I'm just gonna do, take it, take my whip finisher. We all know I love this thing. And whip finish. One. So since this fly, hopefully, is gonna be in a lot of fish's mouths. Oop, that one didn't lock in. See, even I have them go bad from time to time. Doing five turn whip finishes. There we go, double whip finished. Now, for most people, I'd say put, put something on there, put some head cement on, good to go. One other thing, and I'll flip the fly around and show you. Along this top, right here where the dumbbell is and you, you're gonna have a little bit of spot and I'll see if my if I turn off this light it'll help you guys see it oh that's making it worse didn't help that much um right here basically right where the uh right where your bucktail comes in you can put head cement all the way back to there really help to strengthen up this fly make it last for a long time especially if you're gonna be getting into things like bluefish uh you go down and fish Chesapeake Bay or something like that and get into bluefish, it'll help the fly live a little longer. Uh, I'll give you a hint, bluefish, it ain't gonna live for very long anyways because bluefish kill flies. But you know what, they're fun to catch and that's all that matters. But that is the fly. Now, has anybody got any other questions besides Brian? I know there are a few of you out there Yeah, this one's a pretty quick tie, as I always, as I said. I'm gonna sit down, tie it one more time. Okay, so yeah, Brian asked, what makes a good guide fly? Good guide fly, really simple, means it's quick to tie and it's effective. So for a lot of us, that's a good thing allows us to be able to fill up our boxes for a guide. That's what it's there for. It's to fill the box after you've been out on the water all day and your customers lost every one of your flies. I've never experienced that luckily when I've been helping out and when I've been guiding, I am lucky on that one, but that's the reason why they call it a guide fly. It's gotta be quick and effective. You see some flies that take hours to tie. That's never been my style. That's never been, never been a way that I see to work. I just don't have that kind of time to tie. So we'll start back up again.
you ever notice I always do like to hold on to my vise? That is a habit of mine. So just covering up that hook eye or covering up that hook. And one thing I uh, really didn't talk about was thread tension. I don't use a lot of thread tension. Um, I know Brian does. I know other people do. For this kind of fly, I don't uh, just because it's not something that I need. Now I'm going to tie this one instead of having that gold dumbbell. Yeah, it came out of the same pack, by the way. Um, Orvis large dumbbells. I've got several pounds of them. But I'm going to use just plain old bronzed or a plain old just black nickel. So this is sort of supposed to look like the old lead. Old lead dumbbells. This is something you could paint them. You know, if you wanted to paint them up, feel free. Again, I plan on fishing it, and most of my flies, I don't expect them to live very long. I know where I like to fish these. Chances of them ending up in the rocks are pretty good. And I generally expect to come back with significantly fewer flies than I left with. So go into the saddle hackles. If you look, you can kind of see a few of these are kinked at the end. I'm not going to grab those. I'm just going to look through here, find two that I like the looks of. If you want to use three, that's fine. If you want to use four, that's fine. I wouldn't go beyond four. You start getting into really heavy, so a lot of lot there. And really, when you think about it, most of these bait fish, they're pretty translucent. So we kind of want to leave the fly pretty translucent. So, yeah, Brian also asked how I'm sinking, how I'm fishing this. Uh, this fly literally gets fished everything from a floating line, a foot to foot or two beneath the surface to, I mean, I've pulled up oyster shells at 75 feet down with it on a sinking line. So this is one of those flies that kind of covers everything. With this size dumbbell on this size hook, it's going to fish pretty deep by its nature. But it's also going to be flipped upside down, so we're going to be hook point up. That's one of the reasons why I like this fly. It's a hook point up fly. I can fish it down around the rocks. I can fish it, you know, in oyster beds. That sort of thing, pull it over an oyster bed as soon as it pops over the side. A lot of times I'll get hit when I'm in salt water. So yeah, this is a fly that gets used in a lot of places. Um, like I said, everything from you know two feet down to well, I know 75, I know I've done 75. A good buddy of mine caught a uh, cod at over 110 feet um just to see if he could a couple years ago on a half and a half. So so I'm tying it up. Looking for that, you know, five or six inches. I'm going to tie this one up just a little bit bigger. Now, when I start getting this long of a tail, we are going to risk fouling the hook. What fouling is, is when that fly or when that feather comes around the hook. I'll take that risk on this one. These scissors are wearing out. But yeah, I'm just going to tie it in. I get I got three feathers on that one. Cool. So so just putting down a good thread base. Grab our chartreuse. The only thing I brought down to this area. This is not my tying bench, by the way. Uh, my tying bench is upstairs, but it has horrible light. I'm downstairs in the dining room where I've got decent light. Hey, Brian, by the way, do you think I need to put more light on? Cool, thanks, dude. Grabbed a little too much hair that time. So I'm going to pull some aside, put it on, uh, put it down on the side. I just crane it out, flip it over. And remember, this is kind of here to help. This particular one is kind of here to help keep this, keep these feathers from wrapping around the hook. Kind of helps to tell them where to go and tell them what to do. So loose thread wraps right here. 
doing this a little differently, just kind of showing you guys a different technique. Hold it up, cut it off. Now I can pull tight with my thread wraps, tie it in. We got that there. Now remember, we gotta now do basically the same thing with our white. I'm gonna pull from a little higher up and hope that this bucktail gets a little shorter up here. Pull out the extra long fibers. That was a, that was a good bucktail. All right, just kind of figuring out what length I want it. Do it again. Tie in one batch. Now you could tie it in as one big giant batch. I like to do two because it allows me to do a little bit of kind of a layering effect. It allows me to help get this to be a little bit bigger profile of bait fish. So that's one thing is uh, with this fly, you can tie it, you know, tie it kind of the way it is right now, keep a really slim profile and imitate a bait fish that's, you know, slim profiled. Uh, something like a big, you know, like a big silver side or something like that. Okay. I can show you, Brian, that'll be, that's an easy one. Um, but I'm trying to tie this to be a little bit bigger profile. Big reason is because I'm trying to imitate something that's a little taller bait fish. Um, you know, you think about it, silver sides, you know, about an inch tall. I'm trying to do more of a, you know, minhaden or almost, you know, think about it, almost shaped like a bluegill. So just kind of playing around. A little bit of eye on this. Type a couple, you'll get pretty good at it pretty quick. This is a pretty simple pattern. I mean, really nothing that came out of Bob and Lefty's ideas ever was difficult. Um, as long as you understood a bit of proportion. So there's there we go. Now got a little bit more, a little bit more profile to that. And also it's a little bit, if you look. I can't really see my hand through it. Um, helps to give that effect of a deeper body. So now Brian had asked if I could show how I do the flash again. I'm just going to tie it in parallel to the hook shank. Two wraps. It's two pretty light wraps. And what it allows you to do is I can move it. Yeah, Brian's right on that. That's definitely, you know, allows me to be more accurate. So what I just did is I went and took that front piece, pulled it down along the side, took the back piece, pushed it down a little bit along the side, and then I'll just tie it in. Now that front piece really doesn't want to play nice for me right now, but this also is a one that's been kind of sitting in my uh, drawer, getting beat up. But there you go. And if you look, if you could see 3D, the uh, it'd be coming out at you right now. I'm actually going to trim that just a little bit short because it's kind of annoying me. But there we go. So you got almost there. So we want to flip it over one more time. Advance your thread to in front of the eye. I'm going to put down a little bit more thread base. And if you remember, I cut too much the last time. Well, I've got it for this time. I don't know if you can see. Unfortunately, I don't have the greatest webcam. Sorry, guys. I really did want to try this on the actual camera. But figure out about how long I want it. Cut it. Tie it in. So, 
And really with this last piece, I'm actually really trying to make sure that I can't see the color of that material through the thread. So I'm trying to really put down a good thread base, trying to create a white head, because um, last time I checked, most bait fish have a white head. And now it's time to finish up the fly. So pretty basic, pretty simple fly. One that you can go in. Um, I know I talked about fishing for uh, stripers with this, but right now go crank a few out. And for my Charlottesville chapter, brethren, what we're going to, I would say, go to the Rivanna. Big smallmouth are making their way in right now. Their big females are making their way in to spawn. When I say big females, 24 inch fish. So the big fish are moving, they're getting ready to spawn. A little bit of pre spawn smallmouth, not a bad option. Rivanna River, it's the one time of year you can really get a big fish. So I think I did three whip finishes because I was talking and not paying attention. Doesn't really matter. But cut it off. Um, Brian asked if you could uh, do use a Sharpie Dad banding or whatnot. You could. Um, it's never been my style. I've always been kind of more of a basic, uh, quick, crank it out kind of a thing. I really learned that from uh, Tommy. Uh, if anybody remembers when I was at the shop, the uh, those whole section of flies that were clousers and whatnot, those were all tied by my buddy Tommy, and that's who taught me how to tie this one. Um, Tommy really didn't do that unless he was tying some other stuff. This fly never would get banding. I've never seen it to be that much of a, you know, way to pick up fish. That's uh, more the fisherman's eye than the fish's eye. But if it's what it's going to take to get it to come out of your fly box, do it by all means. Um, cover up that thread. You can do it, or you can just use whatever color thread you want to use. Um, so I've got white because I'm tying a white fly. Somewhere in here, I'll show it. But, I mean, I've tied it up with black thread. I've tied it with brown thread. Um, I actually will sometimes use different colors of thread to, so I can just glance and see what size dumbbells I've got if I'm fishing multiple size dumbbells. Um, something like red usually indicates to me that I've got a heavier head. If I've got something like a tungsten dumbbell on there instead of uh, non-toxic brass or something like that. But generally it's white thread for me. Again, guide fly thing. It's make it simple, make it quick, make it so I can fill my box quickly and be able to get back out on the water. It's uh, when you think about it for a guy, the reason why guide flies are like that, I just come home. Um, I got a couple of buddies who are guides. They get home at seven o'clock at night and are back out on the water by six o'clock the next morning. They got to sleep at some point in there and eat dinner and, you know, interact with their uh, significant other. So they definitely need something that they can tie quick and get refilled up in the box quick. Um, I give those guys a lot of credit. because That's a tough life, but I'll flip it over. I'll pull it out of the vise so you can kind of see, and I'll print it up a little bit. Um, so this one, if you look, it is kind of got a little bit bigger of a body. And what this will look like is any one of a number of bait fish in the river. Um, go smallmouth fishing with this. You know, it'll look like a bait fish in the river, and it's a pretty good sized meal. This is, you know, four inches long or so. It's a good sized meal. And especially for those big fish, they want a big meal. Uh, don't go throw in little size eight and tens for them. They, uh, they want something big. But yeah, that's everything, guys. Uh, I think Brian is going to make this available to everybody after we are over and publish it. So if you want to be able to take a look, go back through. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess everyone can uh, reach out to me. Reach out. Um, Ask questions on the uh, Facebook page if you've got access to that. If not, send Brian an uh, email. He'll get in front of me if you've got any other questions. And I just want to tell everyone, have a great night. Hope everyone's doing well because uh, I know a lot of us are stuck inside and stuck at home. And, you know, getting out on the water is something we can do. Uh, just so long as we're not spending getting too close to everybody, which is one of the reasons why to get out there. Um, get out there for smallmouth because everyone's heading over to the trout waters right now. and. Smallmouth are biting, and it's time to go get a big one and go get something where you can get a nice picture with it. So I want to thank everyone for coming out, and uh, have a great evening. Bye.